Hey, welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle, and today we're going to talk about self-defense myths or misunderstandings. And uh, the topic for today is stun guns and tasers. Now, unfortunately, in the United States of America right now, we are very, very accustomed to referring to things by their common names. Now, if you you know you know better, you realize that Jello is a trademark or it's a branded name for a specific type of gelatin dessert. You know, but we refer to all gelatin dessert as what Jello, right? Well, in the United States of America right now, we refer to all electronic subject control or subject restraint devices as stun guns or we refer to them all as tasers. Everything's a taser. Uh, and the fact of the matter is T-A-S-E-R, uh, Thomas A. Swift electric rifle, that's where that came from, taser. Taser is a specific product and a specific brand. brand. <laughs> this thing right here in my hand, this is a handheld stun gun. These were really popular back in the mid to late 80s and the early 90s even. Uh, and even when I was a police officer, when I uh, very uh, became a police officer back in around 91 or so, uh, cops were still carrying these on their belts. Cops don't carry them today. You know why? Because they figured out a long, long time ago that the handheld stun gun is essentially worthless and it takes up a lot of valuable real estate on their duty belt, so they stopped using them. And people say, oh, well, that's not true. I, I heard that, uh, you know, that they worked. Well, here's how this worked when back in the old cop days. How the handheld stun gun would work is you'd have a bad guy and he's decided that he's not going to jail. So you end up wrestling with the bad guy and you're on the ground and you're trying to get the cuffs on the bad guy. And the bad guy's got his hands up underneath and he's on the ground and you're like, give me your hands, give me your hands. And you're sitting on him and your partner runs up and he whips out his stun gun and he starts juicing the dude and saying, give me your hand, give me your hands. Eventually the guy gets annoyed and tired of it and he gives you his hands. All right, that's how these things used to work. They're not one-on-one, -on -one, let's duke it out tools. And even when I was a, a young police officer, the basic training program for the handheld stun gun told you that in order to get maximum compliance or effect from a handheld stun gun, you had to apply it for four to five seconds continuously. Now, why do we use stun guns? Do we use stun guns because someone's trying to shoot us? No, we use them for non-lethal or less than lethal confrontations. How many times can a human being punch you in the face, an angry individual, how many times can they punch you in four to five seconds? Ready, go. That's a long, long time. And what is the stun gun? The stun gun is a contact device. That means you and I have to be within reach of each other. I have to be able to touch you to make the stun gun work. And therein is the big reason why this is not what you want to give to your grandma and your Aunt Susie and your Uncle Fred and your daughter. Give them one of these. Oh, this will take care of all their personal defense needs. Wrong. The last thing I want my 16-year-old daughter doing is, is closing with and trying to get close to an attacker so that they can use their stun gun and make it work. I want them to get away from them. I don't want them to have to think, well, this thing's only going to work when I can touch them with it. And then we get back to that four to five seconds to make it work. And they say, oh, yeah, but Paul, I saw this commercial, and or I was at the mall, and the guy at the mall was like, <coughs> how many people have a mall where they have the stun gun kiosk? How many people want to choke the guy at the stun gun kiosk? Anyone? Yeah. And, oh, it makes blue sparks and stuff. You know who the blue sparks scare? you. The little blue sparks scare you and children that have never had a stun gun applied to them. Any legitimate bad guy that's been fighting and abusing people his whole life is not afraid of the little blue sparks. Okay, So get that out of your mind. You're the only one that's afraid of the little blue sparks, not the guy who's going to break your nose in the parking lot. Now let's talk about the actual taser product. Now this is the civilian taser. It looks a little bit different than the standard 
this right here is more of your police uh, type taser. The reason the taser works is because it launches out probes that are attached to wires and probe A sticks in you and probe B sticks in you and guess what your body does? Your body completes the circuit. Okay, that's why it works. But it's not just a pain compliance tool. It's an involuntary compliance tool. What does that mean? It means it doesn't matter how drunk you are or how you know adverse to pain you are, uh, how you know cracked out on drugs you are. It doesn't need your um, <laughs> your compliance. Uh, it, this is a pain compliance tool. It gives you pain, and you and you oh that hurts, and you comply. The taser. When the probes go in you, they are affecting your uh, sympathetic nervous system, and it's an involuntary type of compliance. There you go. The contact stun is pain compliance, okay, but the actual probes are involuntary, and hence the difference between an actual taser and a stun gun. Now, actual tasers are relatively expensive. They're not cheap. Uh, they do work very, very well. Uh, I've, I've had the ride myself when I was a police officer. I had to take the five second ride uh, and they do work. The problem with these is you really only get one shot. Uh, if you miss, if the guy's trying to punch you in the face and he's acting all wild and you shoot and the probe misses, he's not gonna hang around and wait for you to Put another hang on, hang on a second let me change a cartridge okay let's go again he's not going to hang around waiting for you to redo the cartridge uh, you're going to have to drive stun him or you're going to have to figure out something else real quick so the taser is not the end all be all it is a an effective use of force tool that kind of bridges the gap between empty hands and a gun uh, if you need a gun if someone is trying to make you dead that's what you need is a gun. You don't need a taser. Cops don't taser people that are trying to shoot them down. Okay, that's not how that works. Okay, <laughs> it's kind of like bringing a knife to a gunfight. Uh, so if you need an actual gun, use a gun. If you need an electronic compliance tool, or if you want to use one, understand that the taser is an actual is an effective compliance tool where the stun gun is little more than a toy and bad guys aren't afraid of little blue sparks if you take that any anything away from this video remember that that the only people are afraid of the little blue sparks is you uh, today's reading assignment I'm going to tell you to go out and read the Constitution of the United States specifically the Bill of Rights it's online all you have to do is Google Bill of Rights US Constitution and it's there so go ahead and read it know your rights that's the only way you can protect them until next time check us out at studentofthegun.com <laughs>